Welcome back everyone to another video. Today we're going to talk about Super M, the latest interesting thing in K-pop since probably the longest time. I'm sure everyone knows them, the SM Entertainment Group announced over the summer that combined different SM boy group members together and made a group targeting the American market in partnership with Capitol Records. At the beginning, fans really did not like the idea. Specifically, many XOLs wanted Baekhyun and Kai to have their own solo activities instead of re-debuting with a new group. Super M Disband Party even trended on Twitter worldwide and caught the attention of many people. But despite fans threatening to boycott the project, it still went forward and they had one of the biggest K-pop debuts of the year. Half because the members were already established and famous idols, and also because SM and Capital had a very strong and calculated strategy. They had the opportunity to make a K-pop group for the American market. They didn't use brand new trainees, but rather members from already famous groups who had built-in fan bases. To combat the fans who were only invested because they only had one group they liked in it, they offered member solo versions of the albums for their favorite members. And another smart thing I think they did was that they opened their tour tickets with the digital download bundle so that it could count in the first week for their sales. There's so much more to the marketing strategy of the whole execution of Super M that I don't even see this good of strategy with regular US artists. Super M and their strategy blew up this week when the album debuted at number one. It was basically a huge war between Super M stands and armies going for each other's throats. The arguments were mainly about how SM and Capital cheated the system for Super M to achieve their number one. And just a disclaimer, I'm just going to be talking about my opinion on this and like why everything is just so ridiculous and stupid. Basically, they were accused of cheating for their 60 variations of merch and tour bundles, their very little stream sales, and their numerous album versions and a bunch of other excuses. What I'll say is, number one, every artist under the sun in the U.S. uses bundles. Even the huge ones, especially in 2019, Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, Backstreet Boys, etc. It seems weird to me to start invalidating it now. I'm not even sure why so many people had a problem with the units sold, because it was confirmed that over 100k was actual CDs and the rest were bundles. Yes, the streams were low, but from the beginning, it seemed like they wanted to sell more physically anyway, so they really played up their strategy to do that. And I don't see what the difference is between fans buying as many albums or CDs as they can versus fans mass streaming and like, you know, listening to music as much as they can in the first week. Excessive streaming and streaming parties are so big in K-pop, I don't see why it would matter the other way around if you did it with physical CDs and digital downloads. Like I said before, they had about eight different album versions, but also many other acts do this too, K-pop and American. It's been done before and it's nothing new, so I just think that it didn't matter either. And a couple days after they went number one, a BuzzFeed article was published about Super M's debut, and the article was sort of like slanted against them and said that all of their worldwide sales for merch bundles through SM stores would count towards charting, when in fact it was clarified later that it was just US sales. The article was written by two fangirls, and I doubt people even go to BuzzFeed for actual journalism, but it did still do some damage. On this situation, I don't even stand Super M. I thought the songs were really good and stuff, but I was never invested in their debut since I wasn't really into any of the boy groups from where the members came from. But I am just so tired of this happening every time a K-pop group does anything or pops off in the US market. No one wants to say it, but so many armies were undercutting the achievement, saying they didn't deserve it and that they undid all the hard work BTS did saying that they were an embarrassment to the industry or stuff like that. It's insane how much negativity there was in just two days. I'm tired of hearing X group cheated to get that. X company paid for that group to get that. X group don't work as much as my faves, etc. It was never that serious. Super M were also accused of stealing the number one from Summer Walker, who had 150 million streams in her first week and debuted at number two. 
I don't know if I want to get into this conversation, but what I will say is that Super M sold more units than her in pure sales and also just overall. I'm not sure how Billboard weighs streaming, but it just didn't happen. Also, the week before the charts came out, Summer was on Twitter saying another artist was trying to take her number one and even did a deal with her merch to boost her sales. So you can't be mad at Super M for using their bundle strategy when Summer Walker was doing the exact same thing. I just think it's unfortunate that this record is trying to be tarnished and ruined just because people think what they did was cheating. Super M were the first K-pop group to debut at number one on the Billboard albums chart. Ten and Lucas were the first Thai and Chinese artists to even reach number one on the chart. If Super M got number two or even placed top ten in the list, I don't think this would have blown up the way it did. I don't even think if this were an American boy group or an American artist that this would have blown up this big. I know it wouldn't have because American artists do what they did all the time. It's just because of this idea that there can be only one big Asian boy group or one big K-pop group in the West for like whatever reason people want to feel that way. SM and Capital had a very strong strategy, which makes sense because they're huge labels that represent huge artists. You can't be mad at them for outsmarting the competition at their debut because they did well. If Super M didn't get number one, I guarantee you everyone would be calling them flops and this and that. But now that they exceeded everyone's expectations, people are scrambling to come up with reasons why the record is invalid. Billboard released an article explaining Super M's number one and nowhere was there any suspicion of chart manipulation or cheating of any kind. It's just so transparent to me how any other artist can use the method Super M used for charting, but when Super M uses it, it's cheating. Just say you don't like Super M and only want your face to be successful and go. There's no other reason. This was a great accomplishment for a great K-pop group, and I hope all the members are proud of themselves and enjoy whatever comes next on their Super M journey, really. All right, and that's just my piece and my opinion on the situation. It was just bothering me this week, so I wanted to talk about it on here. Let me know what you guys think of the situation, and I'll see you guys later this week.